Once you get your eye, if your picture like mine is uh, sort of bigger than just the eye, so I'm going to crop it a little bit. So I'll click on the image and um, click crop image. And I'm going to make it a little bit closer. Do, 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 do. All right. Then I'm going to apply. And then I'll resize this. I'm holding shift so it doesn't get all squished. And I'll put it here. And one of the things about um, the blob brush is it's really, you can get a lot of detail. You can get a super painterly sort of experience with it. Um, but you do need to be cognizant of your layers and you may need to move layers around. So what I'm not very good at, but I'm trying to get better at, and hopefully I can instill in you, is to um, be organized with your layers. As you can see right here, I'm not being very organized with my layers, but I'm going to try. So uh, open your layers window if you don't have it open already. So window and layers. And then in your layers, we're going to create a new layer. I'm closing this one up. I'm going to close all these up so that it, it's a little clearer. And of course, I have way more layers than you would have um, because I'm, I've been working on this in two different classes. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to make a new layer and to do that I just press this little plus sign and I'm going to rename that uh, eyeball. So to rename it I just double clicked on it. Everything in this layer will now be highlighted um, this teal color but yours if it's your only your second layer it's probably red. And I want to move this eye picture onto that layer. So my first indication of where that is, is that it's outlined in purpley blue. So I'm guessing, I know that it's on the purpley blue layer. The other reason I know that is because there's this little square next to it. So I'm going to open that purpley blue layer. And the little square is right next to this. So this is my image. And I'm going to drag that image into... Well, I'm going to try to drag it into the eyeball layer. I'm going to lock all these other ones so I'm not working on them. And then I'll open that eyeball layer and lock that photo because I don't want it to move when I'm working on it. But you don't want to lock the whole layer or else you aren't going to be able to work on it. So let me know once you're, once you're locked up. All right, so now we are going to take our blob brush. Remember, the blob brush makes organic shapes. Um, so you're going to take your um, blob brush, which is located underneath your paintbrush. So you can click and hold on the blob brush and grab it. We're going to open our swatches so that we have our grayscale. Okay, whoops. No, I don't want that. Open my swatches. Apparently my swatches was open already, but I didn't see it until it disappeared. Open it again. And like I said yesterday, there's um, 10 values of gray already in here. So all of the different uh, percentages from 5 to 100 of black. These ones with a little white corner, I've added myself. So if you want a gray in between, say you just you would just add... Um, you could just click, you know, click on one that's existing and add a swatch and it would make a copy of that one. So we could change this to from 15. We can make one at 25, for example. And it doesn't really matter what it's called. And so then you'll have another gray in there. So you can make more specific grays if you want. Um, but you're going to choose a, your choose your 5%. And we are going to uh, use the blob brush to make a big organic shape over the whole part of the eye that we can see. And remember, you can make your brush bigger and smaller using the bracket keys next to the P. 
and you're going to go over everything over the over the pupil now not all of this eye is that bright but we're going to just make our first shape the lightest color And remember, Command Z is backwards. And if you want to use the um, eraser tool, you can do that too to get rid of stuff that you did. I tend to like to start sort of with a small brush and then, then go in with a bigger one to fill in bigger areas. That's me. Just tell me when you've got your shape down. I'll just keep adding details. Not that this is details yet. All right, so now we can't actually see what the rest of the eye looks like, so that's not helpful to us. So what we want to do is go into our layers again and um, open, open the layer up. And where this shape is that we just made, you're going to take the eyeball away on the left side, and that's going to disappear it. It's not gone. It's still there. We just can't see it. <clears throat> So then, after that's disappeared, you're going to grab your blob brush again and grab a new value. So maybe you want to do <clears throat> maybe you want to do your darkest value, or maybe you want to do the next lightest. Let's say let's start with our darkest. So I'm going to choose not quite black. Oh no, I'm going to choose black. And go in. I'll do that here. And I'm also going to do sort of the eyelashes slash eye line. And now that I'm getting close to this eyeball, I'm having lots of ideas about how detailed I can really get. And I'm getting sort of excited, but that's just me being extra. So get your next sort of layer of shape or your next set of shapes. And so I'm actually probably going to do the eyelid too the crease of the eyelid because that looks pretty dark to me. And you just tell me when you're done and I'll stop where I'm at. All right, and um, okay, so now I have two different, I don't know what yours actually looks like, but I have two different shapes. I actually might have more than that that are this, that are this value. So I'm gonna press V, so I have my selector, and I'm gonna click and drag so that all of those are selected at once. And then I'm gonna group them. So that means that they're going to behave together and there'll be a group in within, even though each thing will be its own individual shape, they will, they will behave um, as, a, like a, as a folder in your um, layers. So Command G will group them. And then if you open your layers, you'll see now that this is a group. 
so I can open it and I can I can use e I can do things to each one individually but but it's easier to keep them grouped here and then we're going to disappear those and then go in with a middle gray so uh, I'm going to go in with a light to middle gray and I'm going to go to the places that are that are um, that are highlights but not but not the brightest parts. So for me, I see that like right on the eyelid and then maybe also in, you know, along the bottom of the eye perhaps, or maybe along the eyelash line. This is where we start to get to be like sort of artisty. <laughs> like you get to choose where you think you see the highlights and shadows and to what degree and what degree of detail, you know, like how small do you want to get your pen or your brush, sorry. Actually, see sort of like a yeah, cool. Tell me when you're done. It's going to be due the end of next week. Okay. We won't have all work days next week, but you will have a little bit of work time. Wait a second. Oh. Oops. Okay. Um, I 
I was getting in my own little world there. Okay, so basically you're going to do that. How many values have we done? Three? I think we've done three. Um, so I will let you, um, I'm just going to show you what you're going to do. I want you to add at least one more value in there. So it could be a highlight or it could be a shadow. Um, but after you've done all your, uh, all your shapes, you're going to appear the eyes. And you will also get rid of the photograph. So you can disappear it like that at first, but you're going to want to eventually unlock it and drag it to the trash so that you can see the eye itself. Um, uh, command B. Oh, there we go. Um, but if you notice, so like here, actually I did a pretty good job at making the layers the way I wanted them, but there's definitely parts, if I disappear all this stuff, there's definitely parts of this um, picture. Oops. No, that's not what I want. There's definitely parts here that are brighter that I might want to go in with another highlight. And so if those layers are below, you may end up having to rearrange or drag some of the parts, some of the layers over and under each other to get the amount of detail that you want. The, as far as a like review for I don't know if you, I, you, I assume that you just did that like site post, but um, as far as saving pictures to put on your site and also to put on the classroom, you wanna make sure to, I'll put the video on the classroom, but there's two different ways of saving and I always have you save two different file types. It's important to graphic design. It's important to, to save, get comfortable saving it. The more you do it, the, the easier it is. But um, if I wanted to save this, you need to have your, you want to have everything appeared because it's not going to save anything that isn't showing. Um, I would check which artboard this is. So this is 18, artboard 18. Um, so I would go to file, export, export as. And I want to name it something specific, not just unit two practice book, because everything would be called that otherwise. So I would say um, value eyeball or something and put it in my graphic design folder, which of course I have no idea where it is now. I don't even have one on my new computer. So here we go. GD. Uh, value eyeball PNG is good. And we want to use the artboards and I'm going to use 18. Export. And I want my background white. And I would notice there that I don't want my that I don't want my picture, so I have to go back in, but I'll make my background white and okay. And now it will be a PNG file. And you also want to file save as save on your computer. And you want to save a, a PDF of it as well. Value eyeball. Use artboards, range, beautiful. Boop. So the PDF goes on the classroom so I can, I can uh, print it and the PNG goes on your website because it's a digital, uh, a digital like photo file. And I think that's all.